Hello everybody, this is John Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm at the Baltimore Museum of Art. I'm not inside, I'm outside. And that's because we're going to talk about the BMA's Sculpture Gardens. We've got not one, but two Sculpture Gardens. Um, their official names are the Allen and Janet Wurzberger Sculpture Garden and then the Ryda and Robert Levy Sculpture Garden. Um, the first one, the Wurzberger Garden, we got in 1980, followed in 1988 by the Levy Garden. Um, they both have wonderful pieces by artists like Rodin and Calder and Miro. We'll pick out a few of those and talk about them at the end. Uh, but let's start with the families themselves. Who were the Wurzbergers and who were the Levies? Um, the Wurzbergers gave their gift first, so we'll start with them. Um, Janet and Alan were kind of like a BMA power couple. Um, they were both on the board of directors of the BMA. Janet, in addition, was on the boards of the Walters uh, Art Museum, uh, the Maryland Institute College of Art, and the American Academy in Rome. Um, it, to boot, she was a noted chef uh, who collaborated at times with none other than the uh, sort of superstar chef James Beard. Um, they had a large art-filled estate in Stevenson called Timberline that included a sculpture garden that many considered uh, as having some of the best pieces of 20th century artists uh, in the country. Um, Janet, as a sad aside, uh, uh, had an untimely tragic death. She died on Christmas Eve from a hit-and-run driver uh, while in Jamaica in 1973. Um, but the couple before that in 1966 had committed their sculptures uh, to the BMA, and in 1980 that came to fruition. Um, all right, that's the Wurzburgers. Uh, who were the Levies? Robert Levy was born in Baltimore. Um, he went to, as an aside, went to Baltimore City College for high school where he was a lacrosse star. My daughter, uh, who helped create these videos in the very beginning, is now a junior at Baltimore City College, uh, so there's a connection there. Um, but Robert, in 1939, married a woman um, named Heida Levy. Um, Levy's father, Alexander, was the head of the Hecht Companies and brought in his new son-in-law into the family business. Um, Robert apparently did okay. He rose to be the chairman and CEO of the Hecht Companies, with stores, of course, in Baltimore and Washington. Um, Robert was a noted uh, civic leader. Uh, he helped found the Baltimore Community Foundation. He helped start projects like the Inner Harbor and Camden Yards. Ryda was also a civic leader. Um, in addition to being on the board here, she was on the board of the Red Cross and the United Way and the Jew Associated Jewish uh, uh, Federation. Um, together, they are often best known as uh, a couple that worked tirelessly to break down religious and racial barriers uh, in Baltimore. But they also had a wonderful art collection um, in their home in the Green Spring Valley that they donated uh, part of to the BMA. Um, the BMA had wanted to have a sculpture garden from its very beginning uh, here in 1929. The BMA got started in 1914, but moved here in 1929. But for years and years, I had not been able to afford it. Uh, the gifts from the Wurzburgers and the Levies uh, changed that, um, and we got our two, uh, our two sculpture gardens. The Wurzburger Garden was added to the new, just outside the new wing, if you've ever been to Gertrude's uh, restaurant, it's right outside there. And it's uh, sort of a formal terrace garden with uh, blue stone pavers. Uh, the center of it is a reflecting pool and fountain. I will sheepishly admit that in the summers I have often been uh, tempted to take my shoes off and put my feet in the reflecting pool, but I don't think the BMA folks would uh, look kindly on that. Um, uh, but the fountain is the centerpiece there. The Levy gar Garden is a little bit bigger. It's next door. It's on space that Hopkins University, which is right next door, owns and leases to the BMA. And it's a little bit more wild. The, uh, the hillside it's built into was not cleared and leveled. Um, when the garden came in, they kept the topography and they kept the uh, trees. So uh, if you walk through it, it's kind of like uh, taking a walk on a hillside in the forest uh, where wonderful internationally known pieces of artwork pop up every once in a while. It's pretty neat as well. All right, let's wrap up by saying a word or two about uh, two pieces of art. We don't have time for too much more than that. Let's pick one from each garden. Um, we're going to start with uh, the Wurzburger Garden and a sculptor named Isamu Noguchi, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He, uh, his piece in 1958, Untitled, uh, sits literally in one end of the reflecting pool. Its base is in the reflecting pool. Um, uh, Noguchi got his start as a sculptor, uh, and he really worked from the 1920s to the 1980s, but got his start under an artist named Gutsan Borgla, who many of us will know, uh, made that rather small piece of artwork called Mount Rushmore. 
Uh, but that Noguchi got to start there, went to medical school for a brief time, I think at Columbia, uh, but then decided to go to the Leonardo da Vinci School of Arts, uh, where he excelled, got a Guggenheim Fellowship, and his uh, career took off. Um, as somewhat of an aside, in the 1940s, um, in solidarity with his, solidarity with his Japanese-American compatriots in California, he moved from New York to California and voluntarily um, entered into an internment camp there to protest uh, the internment of Japanese Americans. He had hoped to work in the shop, uh, which would, of course, been an incredible addition to the internment camp shop, uh, but they never let him do that. When he wanted to leave, they wouldn't let him do that either. Begrudgingly, they gave him a one-month furlough, he, uh, which he never returned from. The FBI was always suspicious of his activities and went after him, uh, interceded only by the really dogged efforts of the ACLU. Um, so a uh, really incredible uh, chapter of his life. Um, in the late 1940s, he returned to artwork. Uh, maybe one of his most famous uh, pieces is in the Noguchi table, which you can still get. He partnered with furniture uh, maker Herman Miller at that time. And then he's got uh, wonderfully big pieces uh, in places like the Yale University's Beinecke Rare Book Library, uh, the Rose Garden at the White House, and then here, uh, here at the BMA. All right, uh, moving right along, the second piece I want to point out is Alex Alexander Calder's 100-yard dash. Uh, the great red flying uh, object in the middle of the Levy Garden. Calder uh, was born just before uh, 1900. His parents wanted him to become an engineer, and I think he actually did get an engineering degree and worked as a hydraulic engineer for a while, but then he started sketching, and then he moved to Paris, and then he became a full-time artist, uh, but never really abandoning his engineering roots, uh, as you can see in his sculptures all over the place. In the 1930s, uh, he was producing uh, sculptures with movable parts, at first with motors and then uh, moved by the air. Somewhat as tongue-in-cheek, the, uh, tongue uh, the, uh, the Dada artist uh, uh, Marcel Duchamp uh, termed them mobiles or mobiles uh, for their movement. Um, Calder then started making large pieces uh, that were like the mobiles but, uh, but stationary. And again, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, another Dada artist, uh, Jean Arp, turned them termed them stabiles uh, for their stationary uh, sort of uh, bent. Um, kind of interesting there. And I think the 100-yard dash is definitely one of uh, uh, Calder's stabiles. Calder, as an artist, was kind of all over the place. Um, in addition to uh, sculptures, he did paintings, he did prints, he made jewelry. At one point, he even painted the outside of a DC-8 four-engined airplane calling it his flying canvas, um, so really all over the place. Here at the BMA, a 100-yard dash uh, it doesn't fly in the air, but it's certainly got uh, movement and activity uh, built all over it, as you can see. I'm going to wrap up by saying if you haven't been to the BMA's sculpture gardens uh, in a while or haven't been here at all, come on out. Uh, it's a wonderful place uh, to take a stroll say maybe a little bit of a thanks to the Wurzburgers and the Levies, and also a little bit of a thanks uh, to the BMA staff who are taking such great care of them. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.